guys, it's Hannah from Storytel Cakes and in this episode we're going to be making something mermaid and unicorn. So a shout out to Carissa for requesting this tutorial. I decided to combine the two together to create a unicorn mermaid carousel cake. So this cake is going to spin and it's going to light up as well. I hope you all will enjoy this tutorial and stay tuned for the end of the video because I'll be announcing my 5k giveaway for 5 very lucky subscribers. Without further ado, let's make a story. For the carousel cake you'll need 2 10 inch cakes one seven inch, one six inch, and a dome. So this dome is a five inch size and you just bake it from a little dome like this. You can get it from a cake store, it's only like 10 bucks. This is going to be the rotating part that's gonna help the carousel rotate. I'm gonna turn it on to show you the different speeds. So that's like the slow version, but we're gonna go for the high version. It's really cool, huh? So this rotating stand is actually designed for jewellery, but I just found it on eBay and all you need to type is rotating stand 7 inch. One very important thing to note is to find a rotating stand that supports at least 10 kilos. Because the one I had, I found it was kind of struggling to rotate due to the weight. So I'll put a link in the description box below where you can find one that supports 10. For the middle part of our carousel, I'm using two 3 inch size foam pieces and if you add them together, they equal 6 inches. We're just going to pop it on here in the middle when we have our carousel spinning. So we're going to pop that in the middle and when you turn it on, it's going to spin. How exciting. You also need three 7 inch cake boards and a large 14 inch cake board. It's just adding a little bit of chocolate ganache to adhere our funfetti cake. Look at all the colours. If you want the recipe for it, just check out my previous video. Buttercream, you can add cream cheese, buttercream, whatever you like, just as a little filling. So at this stage, I realized that I centered the cake, but I want it more towards the end. So chocolate still hasn't set, just gonna push it down a little bit. So we have more room to put our little creatures later. So add our chocolate ganache. Okay, how did it go back up <laughs> if I ate it? Right. So a really easy way to get it nice and smooth is to use some gloves and just apply a bit of warm water onto your hands and literally just smooth it out. You can use like a scraper if you don't want to do this, but it won't give you the exact smooth look that you're after. If you feel like it's, you know, it's drying or ripping here, you just need to add a little bit more water and it will smooth out, see? Okay, you have your perfect little dome. Love it. So before you ganache a 7 inch cake, you do need to remember to mark the board. So here I have a 7 inch board and this was the 7 inch cake. I'm going to flip the board around because that's going to be the bottom of it. And with our foam here, just going to Add it together, put a skewer in to secure it in place, add another skewer, you can use an This next step is absolutely optional but I think it will make that extra wow factor to your cake. I bought these balloon lights online and they're just little lights like this and you turn it on and they light up like that. So people usually put these inside balloons, like you know when you go overseas and you see like the balloons flying? No. I got these from eBay and it came in like a whole packet like this. We're gonna use four to go around the entire circle. Just gonna like cross it here, cross it here, here, and here. So the reason why we're marking this is so when it's on the cake and we look underneath, we can know where we need to add it on. So once you've marked your board, you can go ahead and completely ganache your 7 inch cake. I'm just going to take the 7 inch cake and cut it in half so I can add some filling in between. But this is absolutely optional, so if you had enough sugar, you can stop here. I love my sugar, so I'm going to keep going. This spatula is actually warmed up by a bit of hot water and then I dried it off. 
it just helps it seal the chocolate seams up. So I've got the seven inch cake and I'm gonna place our six inch cake on top of the seven inch cake. To fill up in between the gaps, just use a little bit of chocolate ganache to seal up the gap. See, this is just a little bit. Now brush on some water and then use some yellow fondant to place over the cake. I'm using some fondant smoothers to help smooth it out as well. And the reason why I'm doing yellow is because we're going to paint it a nice gold color later. And this is the perfect transitioning color. I have here some piping gel and piping gel is perfect for adding sequins onto your cake because they really stick the sequins in place. Put a five inch board on top to know where to kind of like stop putting the piping gel. And then with a the tray, just pour out all your confetti sequins. I'll put a link in the description box where you can find these. Now place it all over your cake and just see how look it sticks so simply. And for this gold edible paint that we're using, I'll show you how to make it in one of my videos in the description box. Just paint it over the cake and you get this gorgeous golden effect. Dust your table with a little bit of corn flour, knead that fondant and then add water and apply it over the mini dome. Bzzz, charge. Oh my god, that was so lame. I'm just gonna use some mini smoothers to kind of smooth out a little ball. So we're just gonna tuck it in like that with the palm of our hands. Add some chocolate and then place it over the cake. Time to make our majestic mermaid scale. So I'm just rolling out some pastel fondant circles and then I'm using some rainbow dust to paint over it, some edible glitter, and you can also use different shimmer effects as well. As always, I'll pop it in the description box so you guys can find out where to get each of them. Just for the first layer, cut them in half and apply it around the cake. And for the second layer, keep them as a full circle and go around all the way until you reach the top. Cover your cake with some blue fondant and smooth it out really quickly so you can get rid of all the air bubbles. And then just work your way downwards and trim off the excess. I'm using a little, two smoothing tools to kind of give it that nice sharp edge and trimming away the excess. Roll out a long strip of fondant. It doesn't even have to be like an exact measurement, just maybe, I guess, 15 centimeters or so. And then place it on a balling mat and using a balling tool, just drill out one side to get nice thin edges. Once you have it this thin, you just wanna apply a little bit of water and adhere onto the cake. You wanna kinda of add some rhythm to the waves. So I'm just using the back of my brush to kind of give that nice effect. I use a mermaid brush, but really you can just use a normal brush. I've also used a brush to kind of get the seam smooothed together and you can use your super high-tech tools your fingers to kind of create more ruffles so use the scissors to trim off any excess and apply on the second layer keep doing this all the way around and as you reach towards the end just alternate and create darker tones so I kind of stuck with like I think two colors before I transitioned add a little bit of water onto your cake board and then add some yellow fondant smooth it all out and trim off the excess Smash up some cookies, release the rage through the cookies, and just when you get it nice and fine like this, you know you're ready to create a sandy effect. Simply add some water to your cake board and sprinkle on those delicious cookie crumbs. With your foam piece, just use some blue fondant, roll it out and add Crisco to help cover it. So Crisco is like this type of shortening that really adheres the fondant nicely compared to water. So I like to use it when it's for foam. Trim off the excess and use your fingers to smooth it together with a smoother as well and then cut off the excess. Get a seven inch cake board, apply some blue fondant over it, trim off the excess and use some white chocolate to adhere it on top. You then wanna do the same on the bottom, but the bottom doesn't need to have any fondant. Add double sided tape to the edges of your board and then some thin blue ribbon to cover it up. We're then going to also add ruffles all the way down on our rotating stand and just leaving a little bit of gap in between the on and off button. So the next step, you definitely can't miss this, you need to ensure that your cake is nice and sturdy. What I'm going to do is just add in a really thick skewer stick. You can use bubble tea straws as well, but I had skewers, so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to mark it right there. Add a little bit of ganache or melted chocolate. Make sure though that this part is really even. You don't want it to be like 
too thick otherwise when you put like the next tier on it's not going to be straight so it needs to be very very even for this and for the back part see how there's like one back part here we're going to put that towards the back where they can't actually see it and then you just want to repeat the step for the cylinder piece so originally we had these marks like you can't really see but we had like these marks written already like how we did the circle that's going to be like kind of our base of where we're going to put the cylinder but of course when you add it you might want to move it a little bit slightly just whatever suits optional step create some nice lace effect with some impression tools and apply it over your cylinder make it look a bit more sparklicious and mermaidish with a pop of edible gold paint so with our balloon lights, what you're going to need to do is get like a really thin string and if you have a look here at the balloon light, it has this little tip that you can wrap around and tie. So once you wrap around and tie it, it will just look like that. With the light, what you need to do is add a little bit of fondant on top and then a bit of water and then on the strings just add tape and make sure the sticky part is facing upwards. So this is going to help support it for you. Find your original mark and give it a bit of a push. Add corn flour to your unicorn mold so it doesn't stick and then dust it off to get rid of most of the excess. I'm just using some white fondant and slowly going around the whole entire mold and a knife to trim off any of the excess. Flip the mold around and then slowly pull away the unicorn. We're going to turn this into a mermaid. Just swishing the ends together when it's still nice and soft and then add on some white fondant after you smooth it down. Just put a little bit of water and then just use your hands to press it down into that nice mermaid shape. Use your fondant smiley tool to add some scales to your mermaid and paint it that nice gold majestic tone. Okay, I've said majestic way <laughs> too many times, but you get the point. Add a little cute horn to your unicorn to make a unicorn and then using two fondant pieces, I'm using purple and pink to add it to the seams. Then once you've created four of them, you just want to add some white chocolate and place it onto a nice gold straw. So if you don't have gold, you really can just take some skewers and paint it gold. I like to add a little bit of fondant on top and then some water to adhere it onto the cake. If you have white chocolate, you can also use that so it's a bit more sturdier. Next up, just use some semi-circles cut out with some glitter and put it all around the cake. Time to grab yourself a snack and sit back and relax guys because I'm now going to show you how to make these majestic sea creatures and nice seaweed to go all around your cake.
thanks for watching guys I appreciate each and every one of you so much and thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers as promised five lucky subscribers will win five prizes if you're from Australia you win a voucher for $35 to purchase a bake it box kit and for the record this is not sponsored all the vouchers were purchased by myself I just thought like the bake it box kits were really awesome if you want to start off baking and then you just have like a kit to bake from if you're not from Australia unfortunately these kits cannot be shipped overseas but I've got you covered because I can make you a cake frame. Just send me a photo of the cake that you want me to turn into a cake frame and I'll ship that overseas for you. So to enter the giveaway, all you need to do is subscribe to Storytale Cakes, hit that notification bell and comment below why you want to win. For bonus entries, just follow me on Instagram and also Bakerbox and comment on the latest Insta posts. Hope to see you guys in the giveaway and I'll see you soon.